Let's keep this one short. Mm-hmm. That's the beginning um, of the podcast. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gabby. I'm Jenna. And I'm Shalise. And you're listening to Music Makes Me Lose Control. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Music Makes Me Lose Control. We started this pod to discuss insight into the industry, talk about current events, debunk pop myths, and dive deep into happening music and artists. Today, we will be discussing how COVID-19 has impacted us as music industry students. We'll be talking about streaming numbers and how live shows have changed. We've been studying music industry for four years now, and it really has been crazy to see how much it has changed in just a matter of a year, really. But before we go into that, let's talk about what merch we are wearing today. I'll go first. (laughs) So I am wearing a Fleetwood Mac shirt. I went to their concert last... October last October time yes Yes. and um (laughs) it was a great show I'm so happy I went I had bad seats but it doesn't matter it was just an amazing vibe full of people my parents age I loved every minute of it so (laughs) great concert 10 out of 10 and great t-shirt it just has their faces um I'm wearing Shanae Aiko this is from her most recent album, Chalumbo. Um, I bought this for myself and I love it. I think it's like an, I don't even know, like a 2XL. It's just, it's huge on me, but it's absolutely amazing. The back is really good, but I can't show it because odds are if I turn around right now, I'll like get like the back of my head or something. So, but look it up. If you want to know, look it up. It's the back is the best part. No, Um, you have to get up right now. (laughs) Right now. Okay, I'll try, but okay. Wait. Let's move the hair to the side. Wait. Okay, can you see? Oh, yes, cute. I love that. Yes, okay. So cute. Slide like the back. That. It's the best part. It's sick. It's really cool. Um, a million out of 10. This is my favorite hoodie at the moment. I'm very serious about my hoodies. Uh, black, because we love black. And yeah. Well, wait, in the out last of 10. episode, you said that you were, you loved crew neck. So hoodie or crew neck? Um, yeah. Which is better? Hard question. Uh, I don't know, because hoodies you can wear in the rain. I don't know. I mean, this is really dumb. <laughs> That's like my only argument. In the you rain? can wear in the rain because it has yeah. a hood. I, it I protects can't... my glasses. Yeah, it's like... Are you guys uh, like glasses people? I think they're on the same level. Like, if I have a crew neck in front of me and a hoodie and I can only pick one... I'm going to pick one and steal the other one because I need them both. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. it. So no answer from Chalice, just <laughs> swerving around the whole question. Today, mine, I talked to Gabby about this before the podcast, just had to make sure that it has a status. This is the crew neck that I wear around the house because I was at this Harry Styles concert that Gabby graciously gave me a ticket to in Philly and I know I was the best partner um and I got this but they only had like big sizes so I think this is a large and I honestly Harry Styles first concert like or the first arena tour he did I hate this font it's really ugly to me so that's why I really wear it around the house but really the best part about it is the sleeve like this shirt is so cute It says, have the time of your life. And I just love that saying. Because I try to do that as much of an introvert as I am. But (laughs) um, it was a good concert. And I I love the way it feels. It's super comfy. I love arm room. I think. I love that red, by the way. It's gorgeous. But I think it's the same font as Times Square. Like, look at the side of the time. 
I don't know why it looks similar to me. Thank you, next. And I don't see what you're talking about. I think you're wrong. Okay. Okay. Maybe my brain just made that up. She's from New York, so I don't know. Anyways, let's move on. Let's talk about COVID-19. So, to start off, (laughs) um, well, I just want to say this little number before we go into just talking about it. So, in April, six weeks after lockdown, uh, Spotify reported that streams of the world's biggest hits went down 11%. So, I don't know about you guys, but I know when I went home and I was on my couch from March to whenever... I wasn't really listening to music. (laughs) Like I was just, I don't know what I did. Honestly, a fever dream. Don't know what I did, but I didn't listen to a lot of music. So that explains that. I don't know about you guys though. (laughs) No, I agree. Um, I think it's actually really weird as, I guess I'll classify us as music people that even we didn't really listen to music like that. Like, I know you said you didn't. I don't think I did either. Like, I would always wait on a Thursday. And when it hit 12, I'm like, yes, let's go. New music. I didn't do that. I don't know if it was like the sadness of COVID (laughs) that kept me from having my happiness with music. But like you said, fever dream, honestly, I don't remember. I wasn't listening to music like that, though. I feel like there were a few factors for me. Like, first of all, like the most obvious is, is that I didn't have my commute. Like I was at home, like going to classes every day. And at school, I would walk through the city and listen to music every single day. Like that's what made the walk so fun. And then um, the other thing was, is like music was maybe more of like, an access point to my feelings and I didn't want to feel at that moment in time so I was like I don't need music right now but yeah it is super weird like I don't I don't know why people stop listening to music yeah I think it's just because I feel like when I'm home I watch more tv so like I filled up like that gap with just watching tv and then like it just came to the point where I was like, I don't want to look for new music. No one's releasing anything anyways, and everything is sad, so I don't want to. But then I started, I live in Miami, so I started getting into the pool. So I was like, well, I have to listen to music when I'm you know, in the pool by myself. It's just kind of lonely. But even when I was doing that, I wasn't looking for new music. I reverted back to like 2012, and I just listened to One Direction. <laughs> So new music just wasn't it for me. But anyways, I think we should talk about live shows and live music because I think that's one of the biggest things that's been affected um, in the music industry because I feel like most of the artists making money make it off live shows and that is now at a complete stop. So I just wanted to open the floor for any comments regarding that. I mean, it's so devastating to every single artist out there, small and big. I mean, for the big ones, they definitely have more of a cushion, but it's so much more of their revenue that allows them to do cool stuff. And then for the smaller artists, it's like basically most of their income. They're not getting shit from streaming, uh, which I think a lot of music industry, like outsiders, like they don't know that fact, like so many artists like that's the bulk of their income because uh, streaming royalties are so little right now. Um, and I don't know when that's going to change. I hope it does. I guess that's what I have right now. I kind of forgot. What, what, what about the say next. virtual concerts? Because Ugh. I remember we took a class in spring mm-hmm. and I remember hearing about, or maybe it was a class from fall. Point is, is that I, we were seeing these, kind of ridiculous ways that people were you know doing shows now and like I remember seeing a picture of like people in bubbles and it's just not I wouldn't go (laughs) keep it at that (laughs) 
I don't want to be in a bubble. I know that right now, I think they're still doing it. A uh, tiny desk. They're doing like at home shows and it's cute. The only thing that like makes me kind of sad is because everyone like, at least I know I do. I love to watch those videos. It's like the whole element of it. Like it's powerful for the artists, for the people watching. I like kind of want them to like have those artists that are doing the tiny desk at home to be able to do like the actual tiny desk like later on because one of my favorite artists um Mac Ayers he did his tiny desk and I'm like I want to see you like actually there I want to see you like in that vibe and like everyone has to like every company obviously has to like make do with the situation I think um but I know that it was like one like kind of like virtual show that I was like, oh, man, like I wish the pandemic wasn't here. So like these artists can have their time to like actually be there and do like that type of show. I don't know. It's definitely sad just because like I I used to go to more concerts, but like I haven't because it's just too much money. And like I'll only go if I really like the artist. So like I was supposed to see Harry Styles over the summer I had floor seats I was in the pit and heartbreaking because now it got postponed to October and I don't know if I'm gonna be in Miami for the show so like I might just have to sell my ticket anyways and like even then like will I be comfortable being on the floor in a pit you know so like I just I wonder how they're gonna do that like can they can they still have pits? It's just, will they even do it? I'm like, I personally also had Harry Styles tickets and I was going to sit with my mom, like kind of in close to the front, but I mean, it was, it was like a very different arena setup, um, but it wasn't in the pit. And we just, I think we got a refund for those because it was on a Wednesday and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. (laughs) Even if I had like pay time off, like, I don't know just it was too much up in the air then I had Tanache that got canceled and it was one of my favorite albums ever in the world broke my heart I had four different concerts (laughs) that I was gonna go to one of them being Janae and loved her for years I finally got these tickets it was like the best gift to myself of course, the pandemic happens. Then I bought my boyfriend Brent Fias tickets. Pandemic happens. I bought Doja Cat, the mm-hmm. pandemic. And mm-hmm. I also bought my boyfriend Stormzy tickets. So four different concerts that I was excited about, planning on going. Um, for three of them, all of them except for Stormzy, I got my money back. They like refunded me because they like made it postponed. So once it was postponed, they would refund you or once it was canceled. I don't know. I got refunded for those. But Stormzy, I didn't like buy the tickets myself. Like I bought them from someone else. And the show for him still says postponed. So basically I'm out of that money and Mm -hmm. I'm probably not going to get it back. I'm upset. But, it, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> but at this pandemic, the money that was lost from COVID, yeah. it, it hurts. I think about it kind of often when I'm like, oh, I need to pay rent or oh, I got to pay this bill. Like, I could have an extra $40 if I didn't buy Stormzy tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against Stormzy, but... <laughs> Everything against COVID. Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> when it, for me, when it comes to, like, the online shows, like, I totally get people wanting to do something else, I guess. But for the ones that cost money, it's like, of course, I want to pay the artist money. But if I'm thinking to myself, I would never do that today. Like, if even if it was somebody I loved so much, like Tam and Paula, I'm not going to pay 25 bucks to watch them on a screen. Like, it's just not something I would do. The only time I think I would have done it in my life was when I was a super fan of, like, One Direction or Mm -hmm. um, 
just people back when I was in high school and I was basically a full-time fan. But now I, I'm i like, I am not going to pay the money for that. Yeah. I think I would pay if it was like um, like a VIP situation. Like if I was on Zoom or something, like I might pay and like they were like answering questions afterwards or like, you know, something like that. I'm like, yeah. Cause then I might, you know, I want to see this. I want to be like, I want to be in there, like my own type of thing, but for just to see them on the screen and it hurts. Cause like you do want to like support them because like you love the music, you love them as like an artist, but it's hard cause we're all in a pandemic. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know how much I would pay. I don't think I'd pay much if anything to see anyone the only thing that I could think of that I would pay for is to see Little Mix but only if it's like a full show you know like choreography and everything if they're just gonna be sitting down and singing then like I can just find some videos on YouTube you know Mm -hmm. but like a full-on production in HD I'll watch that I'll watch it. I'll pay for it. But it has to be like a full production. Yeah. If not, then no. Yeah. Like Jenna was saying how like she would pay for like One Direction in high school. I'd pay for One Direction now. Oh, I'd pay for One Direction now. <laughs> I would sell okay. everything. Everything I own. I will sell it. I will give everything in my bank account. I will pay any amount to see them right now. It's there, so funny to think about. <laughs> there have been a lot of tweets lately that say when the pandemic is over, it's starting to sound like when direct one direction gets back together. And that is exactly <laughs> what you just said. Like it's not happening. Oh my gosh. Just the thought of one direction like doing something online. Do you know how quick I would be broke? I would be broke. <laughs> like it's so crazy. People don't believe me when I say like I, I would spend the so bulk of my savings for sure. Uh, all of it. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> In a, a snap. I'm paying. Like, yeah. I mean, I would pay anything for like another one D day. Uh, I was there anything. for the whole thing. I was there for the whole thing too. I took it in the car and everything. I was like, I'm not leaving my phone, mom. <laughs> It was eight whole hours of just greatness. Oh my god. Uh, okay, so Anyways. we have veered off the topic. Back. Medically. <laughs> Back to live shows and venues. Let's just talk about concerts. Like, what did we lose emotionally here? Because, like, Live Nation, they did this study in 2018, and apparently 60 per- 66% of the respondents said that they crave experiences that put them in contact with real people. And um, that music provided an average increase of 53% in emotional intensity. And after the show, participants self-reported a five times increase in mood compared to the beginning of the show. So, like, let's talk about, like, just what we have lost in terms of, like, having that live show to look forward to. Yeah, I mean, I think we lost a lot of, like, the anticipation, like... Now it's, it almost feels like people release music and it's like, okay, cool. But like, I'll never get to see that live ever. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just like lost the effect almost. And it's, it's sad because when you go to a show for an artist that like you really love and like the anticipation of like, oh my God, I'm going to see them tonight. And then it's like, you get there and then the lights turn off and it's like, oh, like, you know, will we get that again? And like, that's sad. I really like those moments. Nothing like it. Yeah, I think, especially when it like comes to COVID, I've seen a lot of people like talk about the things that we used to do and how we kind of won't ever do that again with like knowing how like COVID has affected us and concerts. It's sad that it's one of those things for me. Like once we get concerts back, like I'm sure I'll go, but I think I'll always have like, like that thought in the back of my head, like, oh, I'm too close to this person or like, uh, I don't want to touch this piece of like, um, like demo merch that they have in the front right there just for us to look at. Like, it's like different things like that. And I'm like, oh, I hate that that happens. 
It's like, I wasn't like a germaphobe before, but I definitely paid attention. Like if someone touched this, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get the thing that's farther back because odds are no one touched that. But now it's just, it just affects you so much more. And when it comes to concerts, I'm like, well, I enjoy it like the same way. I hope I will. And I hope I can actually get the chance to like be there again and see like one of my favorite artists on stage. Mm -hmm. But everything's like a who knows right now. Yeah. That just, that's just so deep. No, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm like, I don't know. I was, I was, I was looking to talk about like just the high I, like I used to get from like being and like, I saw five seconds of summer two times and like one direction two times. And like, just being there when the lights go down and you're just f-ing belting your song that you love right then and there and you see them. It's just like such a rush. I never really talked to people. Like I would go to concerts alone sometimes and I would just be chilling. But when they came out, it was like, uh, like I'm am with people and like we're all singing mm-hmm. together and it's so fun and it's so loud. And it's just like, it's so exhilarating. I love it. I love concerts so much. Yeah, that so, connection. Yeah. Like to other people that you will never meet before. <laughs> I love to hear people talk about like meeting people at a concert and now they're like best friends. Yeah. <laughs> I literally had a group of people I met on Twitter. Like then we all met at the 1D concert and I still hold them at dear to my heart, but we don't talk anymore. <laughs> because One Direction was basically <laughs> the only thing we had in common, but... <laughs> <laughs> but still, a great time in my life. Great yeah. time. But yeah, it's just yeah. sad to lose that rush. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the, the after, like, when it's over, and you're, like, walking away, and you're like, wow, that was so much fun, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, the ringing in your ears. It's just... <laughs> the loss of hearing. Ugh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> the muffled, like... <laughs> times and when you go with um, people and you're like you're walking away and you're like oh my god like remember when they did this and this and this it's like seeing a good mm-hmm. movie but like even like five times better, better for yeah. sure so good yeah and then apparently like there are all these independent live venues that are at risk of shutting down permanently like I did a whole project last quarter on live music in the pandemic and um, apparently, like, 66% of all of those involved in the live music industry have had a reduction in pay. It's been reduced or it's gone altogether. And, like, they've all filed for unemployment insurance. And the only the relief that they've gotten, I think, was maybe at the beginning of the pandemic. And then a Save Our Stages Act was passed in late December, which was good because they got $15 billion, like, obviously divided up to um, funding for live venues, independent movie theaters, and cultural institutions. So that allowed some people to pay their mortgages and pay some people, hopefully, but still, it's, it's definitely, I doubt that it's enough. But then there's already some venues that have been shut down. So like the one that we, maybe we would know of, I've never been to it, is Boot and Saddle in Philadelphia. So that's oh, just close. wiped. Yep, mm-hmm. that's just wiped. Never been, but like I heard of it. Right, and like yeah. the worry is that like AEG and Live Nation are just going to be the only ones in charge, which will allow them to do whatever they want with mm-hmm. live venues. And then you're going to miss, you're going to just lose all those like small venues in your town. Like for me, that's probably first Ave, and I've had like, several really good experiences there and like if that shut down I would be like really upset I don't know what I would do I mean I was driving the other day passing uh world cafe and I I just I passed it in my head I was like I hope they're doing okay I was like (laughs) no it's sad though because I mean that I've only been in there once but like I don't know like I hope they they like stay open and like it's just it would be sad that you know, like, all these people are losing their job just because, I don't know. It's just, it sucks. Yeah. And I hope everyone's able to, you know, stay positive and stay open. So when do you think you all go to a concert next? I know Shalise said she doesn't know if she ever will. 
I think I definitely will because I don't think I can live without like the concert scene, but I might just like still wear a mask. I still got it. I'll have like the thing that covers your face. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but like, I think it's just like being safe, you know? I don't know. If they said like concerts were back and like, there's no chance of like you getting Corona or like whatever. Like, yeah, I'd be back in a second. And like, whenever they do announce that, Hey, we can go back to concerts, you know, like I'll be buying my tickets. I'll just, you know, my hands will be shaking. <laughs> while I'm doing. It. I think I'm always going to wear a mask. I just, it's gross. When you think about it, people are, people are gross and they're like, breathing on top of you they like get in line and they're like right there and just Mm -hmm. people don't know personal space and so I kind of like the mask especially like for traveling I'm never getting on a plane without a mask ever again (laughs) like ever (laughs) for a concert I could see it being more difficult because I'd probably be like screaming or singing (laughs) and so I could imagine the mask just like slowly falling now that I'm thinking about it But then people would be yelling, therefore spitting, therefore virus. Yeah. So So, you make a good point with the face shield. Listen, this is what I'm saying. (laughs) Like, I'm going to keep all this stuff. I already have masks to match every outfit. I'm still going to look good, go to my concerts, but I'm going to be safe. (laughs) And it'll still be fun. And I can sing with a mask on because when I walk the streets to go to work now... (laughs) I'm singing my songs out loud. I'm sorry to everyone around me, but I do. So it's possible. It'll happen. You could do it. For me, I am like, once I get vaccinated and there's herd immunity, like, I'm not, like, I want to go back to living my damn life. I want to <laughs> go back to being at the concerts the way that they were. Like, of course, if, if there's a risk of spreading COVID, I would be wearing my mask. But if there, if that risk has, is gone altogether and the health professionals say like, you don't have to wear your mask, like you're not going to spread it to people. Like the, the probability is very low of that. Like I would go to concerts without a mask, I guess, but I'm so excited to go back. And if I get to go to Tame Impala in October, I will be probably the happiest person in the world. And I've never been able to drink at a venue yet because didn't didn't get to go to a concert while I was 21. So I haven't had that experience. Now I can be the person to spill beer on people. It's happened to me so many times. Anyways, yeah. I just want to get back to the way it was, even if it's a bit different. But if I can just go get to the concert and not spread the virus and hurt anybody or hurt myself, I'll be good. But obviously I'd be vaccinated. Like I'm yeah. not doing anything until I'm vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, even then you'd have to wait until like most of the population got vaccinated. And exactly. like, God knows when that'll yep. be. I don't think that'll be October. That's for sure. Okay. Oh well, to bring up the mood a bit I guess <laughs> let's talk about a recurring segment that we're gonna have which is songs that are getting you through it right now we can talk about songs that got you through COVID since it kind of relates to today's um topic or just songs getting you through it right now so Shalise you can start yes I will go first so I had a list of five we're gonna go with two I'll share two. First one. 3435, Ariana. You already know. Banger. Yark. Banger. Before TikTok made it, you know, a thing. Banger. Banger, banger, banger. That song is what I listen to when I'm getting hyped, getting dressed. 3435, yes. We all know the meaning. We don't need to get into that. Now, my second song, we're going to do a a real big 360. 180. (laughs) 360 means you come back. That's what I meant. (laughs) 
We're going to go with the song Promises by Maverick City Music. It is a gospel song. It's like 10 minutes, maybe. I listen to that song every day when I'm going to work because, you know, sometimes you just need that. And that one, vocally, everything about that song, amazing. Two totally different songs, but they're definitely what's getting me through life right now. And, you know, you need the variety sometimes. So those are mine. Quick question. Does anybody, like, let's just, I just want to take a quick test of, like, who we are. So I'm a kind of person who can listen to a song over and over again. Like, if I love it, I will be listening to it over and over. Like, do you guys do that? I know. Yes. Oh, okay. Because there are some people that are like, what? Jenna, stop playing that. And I'm like, but I love it. And it's so good. And every time it's good. Yeah. Anyways, okay, just had to know who I was dealing with here. <laughs> so this was one of those songs for me during the pandemic. It's Rain On Me by Lady Gaga featuring Ariana Grande. And first of all, the music video is pretty freaking good. Lady Gaga is very dramatic. In the beginning, she's like laying on the ground in the rain. It's great. But then uh, the dance moves between the two groups, like Lady Gaga has her group and then Ariana has her group. And uh, I just kind of love it. So I was listening to this during the pandemic. And it's just for me, when things are tough and I don't want to feel anything, it's those songs that are so hype. All you're, all you're doing is just being like in the moment of that song. And like that's that was the song for me. Cause it's just so like hype and you can't think about anything else but the song. It's great. And I could do anything with it, do chores, do work. Like it was just, it just makes me feel happy. That song got me through like the summer, late summer part of the pandemic. Yeah. Thank you, pop queens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you guys are going to hate my answer. I it's just a little I mix. feel it. No. Okay. Oh. Wow, we need to hate on Little Mix. I honestly, I need to get updated on their catalog. I, I was have rude. Not been updated. <laughs> but it's fine. No, I support them. <laughs> I hope so. Anyways, the song that I've been listening to on repeat, full blast, pouring my heart out to it. Driver's license. Ugh. Ugh. All the, Cap- my heart out. all the Capricorns love this song. <laughs> Anyone would think I went through like the worst breakup of my life. And no, no, I just like the song. <laughs> I think it's a banger. Truly. I it's really do. Good. I haven't listened to it in full yet. Only on TikTok, basically. It's good. No, on TikTok, they like ruin but it though. I will say which I might be by myself. I like um, the one that Sabrina Carpenter came out. What is it? Skin? Skin. I like it. No one likes it. I'm like, I I like skin. Everyone is just like... A hater. They are just fully haters. And not for nothing, if we want to get into this just a little bit, it's planned. Like oh. that stuff has to be yeah. planned. It's planned. We know it's planned, but that's why it's kind of annoying that these people are like so deep into it where they're like, no, Sabrina, like, why would you do this? And you're like so much older, blah, blah, blah. It's a good song. Vibe, move on. This is not your story. It's not your life. You're not in it. Uh, those comments I was reading, I was like, when her song came out, I was like, I vibe. I like it. But y'all know I like my like slow songs. That's probably why. (laughs) No, I mean, I think it's a good song. Honestly, I think the drama is really funny. And I think it's funny to see people like my age, you know, like fighting with people on like TikTok being like, oh, like Serena shouldn't have written that song. And I'm like, dude, (laughs) like who cares? That's what I'm saying. Like, go ahead. Keep doing it. Run up their streams. Like, look what you did to this little girl. Like, not little. I don't want to make it where she's like a child. But like, you know, like, look at what you did. She's 17 though. You can't start her whole career because of drama that you have no concrete evidence on. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, but I watched a whole YouTube video explaining the the like love triangle because 
<laughs> I listened to the song and I was like, banger, love it. And then I see the comments and it was like, oh, the song, the boy, the other girl. And I was like, what is happening? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Question. Is Sabrina the other girl? Yeah. Okay. Supposedly. Can you tell that I don't know anything? Girl. I've been pretty silent for the last minute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. You should watch. It's a 27 minute video. Y'all are way more current than I am. <laughs> um, and it'll explain the love triangle. I did not watch the YouTube video. I got all my information from the other people on TikTok that were going crazy. That watched the 27 but, minute YouTube video. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's where I got my info. Cause like, I didn't even know this song came out. Literally, I knew nothing. But I like when I saw it on TikTok, it was it lived on my for you page. Every other video oh, was this driver's yeah. license. And I was like, fine, got it. I'll go listen. Then it was like, not to keep talking about this, but people were going into the her music video for it. And they were like, when she, I, there was this one girl who was talking about when she's at the table and like, they're like, she's using this as a metaphor to blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah. hold up. There's no way. There's no way this girl thought this deep into it. And if she did, bravo, you know, but come on. Oh, yeah. That's my song at the moment. <laughs> Very good. Let's just finish off talking about how the music industry has changed. And we kind of already spoke about it, but like, do we think it'll ever go back to the way it was? Or like, do you think we'll just live in this world of like, no shows, just releases and like some music videos here and there? I think we need shows. I need shows. Artists need shows. They need the money from the shows. So they need shows. <laughs> I think I think concerts are coming back in terms of like uh, content you release. Like I think I honestly am not going to think of any examples right now. But I think like even on TikTok and like music videos, like that whole level of like production around an artist has been kind of stepped up, and I like that. I really like visual content. It taught the industry something. I think the lesson towards the live music industry is pretty cruel, but in terms of like finding new ways, again, Rob Weitzner always told us creative destruction, you got to figure out how to change the industry and stay ahead of it and just basically be ready for anything. Um, and I think artists have firsthand had to learn that, maybe not in the best way, but I think overall, it's something that we just have to move on from and deal with, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of been nice to see like some artists being more interactive with their fans on social media because it's the only way they can like keep up. Um, so like you see like a lot of artists like on TikTok now and it's like, well, it's like nice to see them in a different environment. And I guess, you know, at the end of the day, it's, for the bigger artists because you know they don't have to worry about money it must be nice for them to like have this break because they never get it mm -hmm. so it'll, I feel like it's like a reset and like they get to like recharge for like hopefully the next stage of you know their life and their music but I mean hopefully it goes back to the way it was but you know maybe part of it was a good thing at the end of the day you know not like Jenna said not for live music but other aspects well what so. you just said about like artists having more breaks like I think that's actually a really good point because I mean they were just overworked and there's so many stories about just on tour depression and how you feel after you get off stage and I think those bigger artists like they if they're already making enough money like you don't need to tour every year or even every yeah. two like, I'd rather more work go into the product and the art of what's going to be released mm -hmm. than to rushing to get back out on tour. And I think that's a, like, a problem with the way the music industry was going, for sure. Yeah, it's just album tour, album tour, album tour until they burn out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know. We'll when see. When they drop off the face of the earth and, no, I miss you. Come back. You never see him again. <laughs> <sighs> I was just going to say, um, 
with you saying like it's good that they got a break it's so hard to like uh decide like I know it's probably hard for them to like whether this is really a break for them you know because you see a bunch of artists that are like I just want to be back on stage and stuff I know they just it's like a internal like fight like it's cool I get to sit on my couch but I miss what I'm used to and you know if you're like in the industry for years like that is what you're used to doing like boom 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 you're constantly doing something some people like that you know like to be worked in that way so it's like it's such a back and forth and I know they're probably like thinking that way like uh, what do I actually want right now you know thank you so much for listening to us talk about sad stuff regarding the music <laughs> industry and the sadness of live music and COVID. But hopefully it only goes up from here. The vaccines start to roll out and everyone starts to, you know, get their thing going. Join us next week. We will be talking about one of our favorite artists, Miss Ariana Grande. Woo-hoo. About to be misses. About to be misses. About to be misses. I forgot. You're right. You're right. Missy Elliott. Please call us. We want the mechanical license. Bye. Bye.